Look, I don't care how good you are at SEO, there is no way you get 100% hit rate with all the content that you publish. What that means is that many times when SEOs publish content and aim to rank for a given keyword, they just don't get there. And even after building links, you end up on page 2 to 4 of Google and you may be getting some long tail traffic, but it's nowhere close to what you expected when you put that page online. So in this video, I want to address this exact situation. You have a page that you invested a lot of time and resources into and it just doesn't rank. This kind of stuff is not usually the kind of stuff that we publish for free on YouTube. We usually put it in our premium member area, but to celebrate the return of Authority Hacker Pro, I decided to share a little bit of the kind of content that we tend to create for our members. And the first thing to do in this situation is kind of a mini audit of what's going on. And my first question is, is it even worse trying to rank for that keyword still? And I know that sounds crazy. I mean, if you created the page, if you decided to go after the queries three, four, five months ago, then it's probably a good keyword. You've probably done a good job, but competitive landscapes change and they change fast. And if you're like me, when you pick a keyword, you kind of like pick a mix of something that has good search intent so that you have a chance at converting the people that land on your website to whatever you use to convert them, but also lower competition while having a decent search volume so it's worth your time to create that content and you have a good chance to rank. The problem is the top ranking sites at the time at which you decided to create that content might be quite different today. And I'm not gonna lie, it happens to us as well. That's what happened on Authority Hacker for the query best keyword research tool. When we wrote that page for that keyword, you know, we did quite well. We ranked quite well uh, for a while, but now if you Google that query, there are essentially massive sites ranking and we have very little chance of beating them unless we spend our days and our nights on trying to rank for that query. And I know a lot of SEOs are going to have their egos tickle them when that happens and they're going to go all in and try to get that query. And even if they do, they don't always get as much traffic as they hope to or they don't get as much traffic as they could have if they picked lower competition queries and kind of focused on what made more sense at the time, which is why we're not really pushing for that keyword. You're often better picking battles that you can actually win quickly and fight on multiple fronts versus just picking one main battle for that one query that you really dream of. So the first thing I usually do in this situation is I pop my keyword into the Ahrefs Keyword Explorer and I decide if it's even worse repurposing that content and spending all that time and effort into going after that query. Do I really stand a chance? If yes, great, then keep going with this video. If not, you can either pick a new keyword for that page or you can just let it be and use it as an internal linking hub to rank other pages if it has links pointing to it. And if that page has no links and no traffic, just get rid of it. It really doesn't help you with anything. From there, and while I am in a keyword explorer, I also tend to look at the link metrics of the top five ranking results. And I kind of like assess them against my link profile. Do I have what it takes to compete for that query or am I gonna have to work on link building as well? And if you're behind in links, it's not the end of the world. Republishing content, refreshing it, is an incredible opportunity to build more links to the page and essentially catch up to the competition. But that's still something that you need to put in a balance when you decide if you wanna go ahead and refresh your content. Is it worth your time? The third thing I look at is the search intent slash dominant article format. In recent years, Google has been quite determined to put a certain post format on the first page for a given query. And if you don't match that post format, whether that's list posts or roundup reviews or how to tutorials, if your page does not match the format that Google loves for that query and that most pages have, your chances to rank are extremely low and you might as well just rewrite your article to match that intent if you want to have a chance here. And to make this tutorial a little bit more interesting, from now on, I'm going to actually take a page from the website bomish.com, which I got built for me by Alpha Investors. I made a video so you can check it out if you want to learn more about that website. But I'm going to be using a page that essentially appeals to most people's daily lives, best flushing toilets. If you put that page in Ahrefs Site Explorer, you will see that we rank on page three for best flushing toilet on the market and page five 
for best flushing toilet, which is the main keyword for that page. And a quick look at the first page of Google shows me that there is a DR7 site ranking on page one, and a lot of sites in the DR30 range are also ranking on page one. So it's a little competitive, but it's doable if that DR7 site is here. Now there are two things that are kind of playing against me on that query. The first thing is that apparently toilets on its own is a niche and there's a lot of like toilet specialized websites ranking for the top positions and they have more relevancy than I have with my domain. The second one is that most of these sites ranking also have links directly to their page, which means I would need to catch up on link building here to have a chance to really take these top positions. Not really my goal here. My goal is more to show you exactly how to do this. But the good news is that my article format is actually matching the article format of the top ranking pages. My article format is a roundup review and the top ranking pages are also roundup reviews. So I don't need to rewrite the whole thing. I mostly need to tweak it, which is exactly what I wanted to show in this tutorial. So we're going to keep going with this. So moving forward, we're going to be zooming a little bit more in and not just look at the overall intent, but at the subtopics of the article and try to understand if our page is hitting all the subtopics that the top ranking pages are hitting. For this, I prepared a simple Google spreadsheet. And in the first column, I just used my H2s and H3s to put an outline of my article. And then in the adjacent columns, I did the same for some of the top ranking articles so that I could just like look at them side by side and have a bird's eye view of what each article is talking about. When I do this for my competitors, I try to kind of label things the same way, even if they did not label it the same way. So for example, a lot of competitors have a section that covers you know, things to think about before buying, considerations before buying, and I label them all considerations before buying so that I can understand that it's the same thing across all these articles, even though it was written a little bit differently. I would recommend you do that if you're going to be following this process. Once I am done, I go back to my articles overview and I highlight in green the section that I have and that my competitors also have. Essentially, these sections could either stay that way or use a light refresh, but don't need to be completely rewritten. And I can recycle these parts of my article in my new version of my article. In this case, we had the intro, the comparison table, the feature snippet bait wasn't in the competitors article, but I thought it was a good idea and we should keep it the mini product reviews, same format as the other ones, and the FAQ section with questions at the end. A lot of our competitors had that, so I want to keep that as is. And then I take a look at the structure of my competitors article and I highlight in red the interesting sections that they have that I don't have in my article. In this case, the four things that I highlighted was considerations before buying, types of flush system, table of content and some much better questions for the FAQ section than the ones I had in my article. And finally, I highlight in yellow the pieces of my article that just aren't that relevant and I'm willing to get rid of if I have to. In this case, while well, the FAQ area was probably a good idea, the questions that alpha investors put in there are borderline stupid. Like how do you flush a toilet properly or how often do you need to flush your toilets? If you're asking that question, you're probably just not flushing enough. So with all these done, I jump into my content outlining tool. In this case, I like to use dynalist.io. It's a free tool. And we are going to be putting a new article structure together where we're going to be starting with the article structure of the article that we had minus the parts that we remove. And we add the interesting sections of the competitors in the right places so that you actually end up with a brand new article structure that includes all the stuff that you were missing. Then it's time to go and work on the rewrites, ads and tweaks. At this point, we use Software SEO's content editor and I pick my main query, in this case, best flushing toilets. And I also pick the competitors. I want them to run the query again so that they will extract their keywords, etc. In this case, most of the top ranking sites made sense. If there is pages from, let's say, Amazon or e-commerce sites, etc., I would recommend you remove them. Otherwise, I tend to include all of them. The one thing where I don't really follow Software SEO on is actually the word count. So first, you recommends more than 5,000 words for that query, but that DR7 site that's ranking only ranks with 1,500 words. And usually what I'd like to do is I'd like to match the word count of the site that had to work the hardest to actually rank where they are. And in this case, that DR7 site is it for me. So my goal is to have at least 1,500 words and I'm not gonna sweat it too much if I don't match the 5,000 plus words that Surfer SEO recommends. Once the analysis has run, I create a Google Doc from Surfer SEO that allows me to have their suggestions on the right panel of the Google Doc. Then I just copy paste the existing article in the Google Doc and I reformat it properly in case there are some kind of issues with the copy and paste. 
And finally, I select the whole thing and I turn it light gray color. And the reason why I do that is so that I can differentiate the old content in light gray and the new content in black. And that's going to allow me to pay my writers properly, see what is left from your content, what is new, and it's going to make things much easier when working on an existing piece of content. From there, what I do is I reopen my dyno list and I add the H2s and H3s and all the new sections that we are going to be adding in the new article. And I remove the ones that I decided to remove when I was planning it. And finally, I add comments on each section to let the writer know exactly what I want for that section. For example, when I ask him to write about the types of flush, I link out to the competitor that did it so he can go and read the article, inspire himself from that and do something quite similar to what's ranking on page one, which is what Google wants to see. Once it's all laid out, I head over to our project management system. In this case, we use Asana and I attach the Google Doc to the task that I'm going to be giving to the writer and I write him a pretty detailed brief so that he knows exactly what I want here because it's quite tricky to edit old content versus creating new content from scratch. And I make sure to tell him to write all his new content in black so I can pay him properly at the end. Once the writer gets back to me with the content done, I approve it or ask him for changes. And then I just copy and paste all the black words into a word counter so I can pay my writer for just what he wrote. I don't need to pay for the whole article. And then I adjust the word count in Surfer SEO so that I get the proper recommendations for the number of keywords to include in my article. We then go through this and try to optimize it based on the recommendations on the right, try to get most things at least green or yellow. And finally, I like to also use Grammarly Premium. It gives us a lot of style recommendations. It checks the spelling a little bit better than Google Docs. And so we use Grammarly Premium and Surfer SEO together to create pretty good content all directly inside Google Doc, which is quite powerful. And once we're done, we just update the new version of the article on the page and we resubmit it to Webmasters Console, re-index it. And depending on your website's authority, the re-indexing is going to take all the way from five minutes on really high authority websites to two to three weeks on really low authority websites. I know it's a pretty long fork to think about and look at. It can be annoying to wait this long, but a quick way to actually check whether Google has re-indexed your content or not is actually to pop the URL in the search box in Google and then click on the little arrow next to the URL and check the cached version. And then on top, you can see the date and you can actually see the content of the page that Google has indexed. If you see the old content and the date that's prior to the time when you re-indexed it in Webmasters Console, Google is still using the old version. And if you see a new date and a new content, then Google has re-indexed your content and you can see the results in your rankings. Unfortunately, I am recording this 48 hours after I re-indexed the content and Google is still using the old date as you can see from the screencast. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a pinned comment below this video so that you can actually see the results after Google has re-indexed the content. But that in a nutshell is the process we recommend you follow to update your failed content. Let me just resume all those steps for you so that you remember exactly what to do. Number one is recheck your keyword and make sure you actually still want to target that keyword. You still have a chance to rank for it. Number two is make sure that your content format matches the search intent and the dominant article format. If it doesn't, it's better for you to rewrite the article completely. And if it does, then you might just need to do some light tweaks like I did in this video. Number three is map out your content structure in a spreadsheet side by side with the top ranking pages content structure so you can have a bird's eye view and see what you have that they don't have and vice versa. Number four is use dynalist.io to make a new outline for your content using the old outline that you had, removing the parts you don't want and adding the parts that your competitors that are ranking have and that you're missing. Then at number five, use the Surfer Content Editor to create a new Google Doc for your content with the suggestions on the right and copy paste your content into that Google Doc. Number seven, turn that old content into the light gray color so that you can identify what is the old content compared to the new content that you're going to be adding in black. Then add the new sections, H2s and H3s inside your content in black and put some comments next to it to tell your writers exactly what you want for each section, including links to the competitors so they can go and check that content. Then when your writer comes back with the content, edit it, make sure that it's good enough for your standard and make sure that it is all coherent together. And then adjust the word count in Surface SEO so that the recommendations match your word count and you actually put the right keyword density, etc., inside your content. Then use Grammarly to actually fix the style, fix the typos and all of that. And finally, update the page on your site and re-index it in Webmasters Console. 
Of course, after you've done all of that, it's probably a good time to look again at your internal linking, look again at starting a new link building campaign for that page, etc. And to be honest, I expect the page I worked on to actually need it to actually make it to page one, but that's a good time to look at this. So that's basically it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to click on the like button below this video, subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. And remember, Authority Hacker Pro, the place where we release this kind of advanced content is coming back up really soon. So if you want more information, head over to authorityhacker.com pro, sign up for the notification and we'll let you know when it's available.